Are you ready to feel nostalgic? Let's reveal some jaw-dropping secrets and surprising facts about the iconic second generation of K-pop. Dolbang Shingi's Yunho once was nearly poisoned by an anti-fan. In October of 2006, a member of an anti-Dolbang Shingi website with the surname Ko had decided to hurt Yunho by giving him something horrible. Following the release of the group's third Korean album, the anti-fan gave Yunho a glass of orange juice mixed in with super glue. Yunho thought that the anti-fan was a staff, so he ended up drinking it, but felt bad immediately afterwards. He started throwing up violently and had to be rushed to the ER where he was hospitalized after receiving a few days of treatment. The anti-fan did turn herself in, but because of her age, Yunho didn't want any charges to be pressed against her. However, the incident continued to affect him for a long time. 2PM's Taekyun went through a similar experience. Back in 2009, he received a letter from a Sasang, but it was far from a pleasant experience. Instead of a nice message, the letter was written in the fan's period blood. Blood. The fan wrote, I dedicate to Taekyun my period blood letter. Taekyun, you cannot live without me, sprinkled with a few strands of my pubes. When the picture of the letter was first posted, netizens were skeptical of the whole thing, accusing the fan of lying, so she uploaded a picture of her bloody pad to show that she was in fact being honest. Once people started leaving mean comments on her account, the fan made a post saying, I am sorry, I apologize for bothering Taekyun as well as his fans. I didn't know it would get this big. I am not a Sasang fan, but but just an obsessive girl. What a bloody nightmare, literally. While Yoonho and Taekyun had traumatizing experiences with crazy obsessive stalkers, Super Junior's Yeosong actually got some help from them. When Super Junior was promoting their comeback twins, Yeosong had actually lost his way and had just been wandering on the streets. Some Sasangs happened to be nearby and asked him what was wrong. After Yeosong innocently confessed that he had forgotten where he lived, the fans guided him back to his dorm. This is probably the first time that Sasangs have proven to be useful to an idol. You know how music can make you feel empowered and invincible? Well, it turns out that South Korea's military had the same idea when they used Girls' Generation's music as a weapon against North Korea. In 2015, the government set up 11 loudspeaker sites along the border with North Korea and played Girls' Generation's hit songs like Genie on repeat. This was done in retaliation for two South Korean soldiers being injured by a North Korean mine. The broadcast lasted up to six hours a day. North Korea wasn't thrilled about this and later labeled it an open act of conflict. They even set up their own speakers to play political propaganda in response. The tension escalated to the point where artillery and rockets were fired across the border for the first time in five years. Eventually, both sides agreed to a meeting and the broadcasts were stopped. While this huge conflict never ended up happening, Girls' Generation ended up gaining a few North Korean fans. Speaking of Girls' Generation, the members have a lot of stories to tell, like the time Taeyeon had beef with Wiz Khalifa. It all started in 2016 when Taeyeon and Wiz Khalifa were set to perform his hit song See You Again at MAMA. At a press conference, Wiz Khalifa had revealed that he would collaborate with a K-pop idol, but tried to keep their identity a secret. Soon after footage of the rehearsal from the award ceremony leaked online, fans were quick to identify Taeyeon as the mystery idol that was set to perform with Wiz Khalifa. However, things took a sour turn when Wiz Khalifa later tweeted that Taeyeon had backed out of the performance, misspelling her name in the process. He tweeted, The fact that Taeyeon backed out of our our performance caught me off guard too, but never accept rejection as failure. According to DJ Bonix, who serves as Wiz Khalifa's official DJ and music director, Taeyeon backed out of the collaboration just minutes before Wiz Khalifa was set to take the stage. After the allegations, Taeyeon took to social media to clarify that the performance was actually cancelled due to technical issues. She stated that she had approached Wiz after hearing about the audio problems and that they were unable to check the audio before the performance was dismissed. To this, Wiz responded, she claimed she had to go to the hospital the night before, did the practice, asked to be on a different stage than me, then cancelled. As it turns out, there was more to the story. It wasn't just a matter of Wiz Khalifa's team being unprepared for the performance, but there was also a misunderstanding that led them to believe that Taeyeon was the one who refused to perform. Talk about complications. If Tiara Soyeon had decided to stay in SM Entertainment, Girls' Generation would have had an entirely different leader. While there were many trainees that were competing to debut in Girls' Generation, Soyeon was one of the idols that came closest to actually making it. She was even supposed to be the leader of the group, but six months before the group actually debuted, she left due to heavy scheduling. It's wild to think of anyone but Taeyeon as the leader. Girls' Generation's Yudi is a contender for one of the weirdest dating rumors of all time. Online communities back in 2013 were swarming with the rumors of a female idol who had two popular actresses wrapped around her finger and willing to do anything to win her heart. According to Sportsoul, who reported the news once, the actresses were head 
over heels for the idol, going as far as to buy her a gift and getting sad when the idol went to promote overseas, as they wouldn't be able to spend so much time with her. The idol was said not to be one to refuse others, so she wasn't sure of her true feelings. One of the actresses was said to have met the idol when they were shooting a drama with a male idol and met her through him. The original post said, I don't know if it's because the idol is a junior that she cannot refuse her advances, but she just does whatever she wants and the managers are said to be going through a huge headache because of this right now. It was widely believed that the idol in question was Yudi and the actresses were Son Yejin and Han Ye Sul based on the clues that were given. The rumors were obviously never confirmed, but what a mess. On the topic of Yudi, did you know that she once went on a blind date with Big Bang member Taeyong? In 2010, Taeyong confessed that he went on a blind date with Yudi once, which led to the two becoming friends. He said that while he was working on his album, he rarely went outside and was only focused on working. This didn't leave a lot of space for him to see others, so his friend decided to set him up with someone. Funnily enough, when Taeyong showed up at the place, Yudi was sitting at the table. He went on to say that he became friends with Yudi as she invited him to Girls' Generation's concert and would call each other occasionally. He also shut down any rumor that the two were romantically involved. Vix's N had a fun story to tell about how his group got kidnapped when they were in Kazakhstan. N said that the members were in Kazakhstan and were riding the bus to the airport as they were going back to Korea. When they arrived at the airport entrance, their manager stepped out and the bus started driving off right away. The driver had told everyone that they were heading to a lounge because there was a big crowd at the airport entrance. The members didn't question what he said and fell asleep, so they had no chance of hearing the manager screaming and following the bus from behind. N said, the manager cursed out all he could while following us. At the time, I thought we were just receiving a special treatment because they said they are taking us to a lounge. They were receiving special treatment in a way as when the bus doors opened, a high school girl stepped in. It turns out that she was the daughter of the president who happened to be a fan of the group and admitted that she had kidnapped them so that they could shake hands and take pictures. Now that's a dedicated fan. Shiny has lots of celebrity fans, with one of them being former American president Barack Obama. Barack Obama gave a speech in Seoul in 2017 about various topics including Korean culture, the alliance between the United States and South Korea, and the power of the free market and democracy. During his speech, Obama mentioned Shiny as an example of friendly relations. He said, famous movies are being filmed in Korea. Young people in the US learn Korean so they can understand Shiny. Likewise, I heard Shiny likes USA's In-N-Out hamburgers. Once they heard that they got a shout out from the former president, he took it upon himself to respond to Obama's praise with an Instagram post saying, thanks for mentioning us, Mr. Obama. Shiny will do our best for the growth of global pop culture. And yes, we do love In-N-Out. The news of Obama's mention of Shiny quickly went viral in Korean media, sparking excitement for a potential future interaction between the two. Before Shiny became the superstars that we know and love, they actually had to take classes for walking. Yeah, we're equally confused. According to Taemin, when the members were still trainees, SM Entertainment decided that they walked weirdly, so they had the members take classes on how to walk properly. Taemin once said, I even had a walking lesson. I was told that my walk was weird. Ki, on the other hand, was told the same thing, but by another member who told him that he walked funny. SM really went all the way to train them. Super Junior's former member Hang Gang actually had to wear a mask for the first few months of his career because of his visa issues. Hang Gang was the first Chinese person to debut in Korea and SM Entertainment's first foreign idol, so they didn't know how to handle him. Both parties were unaware of certain visa laws that prevented Hang Gang from performing. He was even told that he could face fines or be kicked out of Korea if he performed on TV. Hang Gang eventually had to wear a mask to be able to continue performing. Despite being one of Super Junior's best dancers, during performances to protect his identity, Hang Gang would often be positioned in the back and lip synced by a different member who was in the center. This led many people to mistake him for a backup dancer. This went on until He Tol just straight up took off Hang Gang's mask and pushed him to the front of the stage. Unfortunately, this moment was only witnessed by those attending the live performance and has never been uploaded or seen by most of the public. 21 actually had contestants from the dating show The Bachelor as their background dancers after they made an appearance on the show. In a 2014 episode of The Bachelor, the season's bachelor, Juan Pablo Galavis, visited Korea with some of the female contestants. 21 gave a special dance lesson to the cast of The Bachelor, teaching them the moves to their hit song, I Am The Best. 21 then invited everyone to their mini concert at the Seoul Times Square Mall, where they performed I Am The Best together, wowing the audience. The guests were thrilled to stand on stage with the group and soak up the energetic atmosphere. Who would think that there was any correlation between Cram Pop and Lady Gaga? Matter of fact, in June and July of 2014, Cram Pop performed as an opening act for Lady Gaga's art rave, the Art Pop Ball Concert Tour. The group traveled to 12 
12 different cities in the United States and Canada to perform. Lady Gaga simply adored the girls, as local staff at the concert witnessed Gaga cheering the members on when they were rehearsing. She also said that she was even more satisfied after she saw the girls perform in person. Gaga said, Our newest opener, Cram Pop, is on right now and so cute. How can I not love them? EXID can single-handedly credit the fact that they're still promoting to a fan cam member of Honey. In 2014, EXID released Up and Down, but it didn't gain much attention initially. However, a fan-recorded video of member Honey performing the song went viral on the internet in October of the same year. The fan cam showed off Honey's captivating dance moves and facial expressions, which caught the eye of many viewers. Because of this single video, Up and Down became a hit, and EXID experienced a surge in popularity and saved the group from disbanding. Honey's fan cam success is often referred to as the Up and Down Syndrome, and it has become a significant milestone in K-pop history, as it helped establish the trend of fan cam culture as more people began filming their own fan cams during music shows. Tell us your thoughts in the comments, and if you want to hear more facts about the different generations in K-pop. We'll see you next time. Bye!